As we're approaching the new year, I think that it's important to set yourself up for success. Meaning, what you do in the beginning of the year kind of sets the tone for what it is that you're going to follow through with for the rest of the upcoming year. I feel like this is why people set New Year's resolutions and why they hope to keep them. I want to talk to anyone who's having an experience right now with a decline in their mental health. I was in a funk for years and being in this funk has caused for me to make a plethora of dumbass decisions that I highly regret. I don't want you to have to go through that. Battling depression was not an easy feat at all, but it was so important for me to fight my demons, and I think that it's important for you to fight your demons too. Just to note though, this is not a video for anyone who is clinically depressed. This isn't for somebody who has to go and see some sort of doctor or like mental health physician and they might need medications and things like that. This video is not for you. This is a video for the average Joe or the average Jane who's slumped, they're just in a funk, they're there's somebody who is always feeling down and they're like a sad boy or a sad girl that's just constantly in this negative zone and they don't know how to get out of it. This is for someone who's just in a really bad place mentally and they want to get out of the hole they dug. Well, I'm here to help you climb out. I think a big portion of depression is really revolving around an identity that you form about being depressed. You are what you say you are. If you claim it, you will have it. I struggled with this for years and it took me a long time for me to understand, do not claim shit that you do not want. If you don't want this title or if you don't want for this to be your status in life, don't claim it. Destroy self-limiting beliefs that are holding you back from being a better person. Stop telling yourself you're a victim. Stop telling yourself that you're broken. Stop telling yourself you're an addict. Stop telling yourself that you're useless and unloved. Stop telling yourself that no one cares about you. You're not a coward. You're not unloved. You're just going through some shit. And there's nothing wrong with going through some shit. Everyone is going to, at some point, be going through some shit. However, that does not mean that you have to take that on as an identity. You're blue and you're going through it right now. I get it. Everyone's allowed to be blue. Being blue is a natural part of being a human being and there's nothing wrong with that. But there is a problem with turning yourself into a blue person. By adopting the narrative of like, woe is me and why do all the negative things in life happen to me and what's wrong with me and I'm just so unloved or whatever kind of narrative that you want to prescribe to yourself. The problem with that is that you adopt whatever comes along with that personality. You're going to take on traits of somebody who identifies as that and be in that boat. If you're telling yourself that you're worthless, you're going to act like a worthless person. If you're telling yourself that you're unloved, you're going to act like someone who is unloved. It'll be a self-fulfilling prophecy and when you do attract these sorts of bad things into your life, you'll think that it's because you're unloved or you'll think that it's because you're useless. But in reality, it's because you're acting like a person who's useless or unloved. Do me a favor and end your pity party. Stop claiming this identity that you don't want. This is not who you want to be. So stop talking as if you're this person. Instead, tell yourself the opposite. I'm blessed. I do matter. My feelings are valid. I am loved. I'm not broken. I might be hurt, but I'm not broken. Quit that pity party and start thinking positively. If your internal self-talk is always negative, then you are always going to feel negatively. I want you to imagine if you had a friend that was constantly saying negative things to you. Literally, imagine you had a friend that was constantly talking to you being like, you're unloved. You're so stupid. Nobody cares about you. You don't matter. I don't think this person would be your friend for very long because they're not a very good friend and they're not making you feel good. So you wouldn't keep them around. I think you gotta handle your own negative self-talk in the same way that you would talk to a person who's being that way to you. You'd be like, shut up, that's not true. At some point you would have to take inventory on that relationship between you and this negative person and you'd cut them off because you'd be like, why am I having this person stay around me saying these awful things to me? I don't like them. They gotta go. Do the same thing with this negative self-talk. Tell that motherfucker to shut the fuck up. Or even if you wanted to imagine yourself doing it to another person, would you be telling a friend of yours, you're stupid, you're an idiot, there's something severely wrong with you. 
nobody cares about you. I think that you yourself would be like, damn, I'm being a very horrible friend to this person. I probably should not be dealing with somebody who's allowing me to even talk to them like this. And more than likely, they would stop talking to you if they didn't have horrible self-esteem. This internal self-talk is so important because it determines how you're gonna feel on a regular basis. Treat yourself well. Treat yourself the way that you would treat a friend of yours that you really care about. Because honestly, you should care about yourself just as much as you care about other people. It's so cliche to say it, but love yourself, care about yourself, take care of yourself. This is important. As I've said before in a previous video, I really feel like a lot of people do this pity party because it's time consuming. It's way easier for you to sit there and complain about how bad your life is and how much everything sucks in the world than it is for you to get up and do something that you know you should be doing. I think deep down, deep, deep down, all of us know for a fact that there's something every single day that we should be doing, but we're not doing it. We're literally skipping over it and choosing to do something else instead. And for a lot of people, that would happen to be having a pity party or just being in a slump. In reality, I think that that sadness is really just a barometer for how often you're not listening to that little voice in the back of your head that's telling you to do something that you know for a fact will make you feel better. The more sad you feel, the less you're listening to that voice that's telling you the right thing to do. Please start listening to that little voice. Start doing what that little voice is telling you to do. Every single time that you do follow that little voice, you develop this stronger bond and relationship with that smaller voice. And it becomes a larger voice. It becomes louder. It, it starts to become something that you're more acquainted with and you really hear it when it's saying, do this instead. The more you do it, the better you'll be able to hear it. It's gonna congratulate you each time getting a little bit louder. Now for this portion, I would like to talk about what I would call taking care of the basics. This is the common advice that you would usually hear on a lot of videos that I feel like we really just don't follow, but you'd be surprised how much your life can improve if you just follow this very minor advice. Once I started doing these things, it's made my mental health and my physical health improve so drastically. Like I feel a billion times better just by following these small couple things. So I highly advise, please do this. Eat whole foods that you're gonna cook at home, meaning go and buy foods that are just what they are. Get a potato, get a steak, get some asparagus, whatever, just whole foods. Not the sugary cereal, not granola bars, not soda, not ice cream. Eat real whole foods and nothing but that. Cook them yourself. Don't go to Chipotle, cook it yourself. Drink a bunch of water all day, every day. Take some vitamins, especially vitamin D3. Get some exercise. I don't care what kind of exercise you wanna do. Walk, run, lift some weights, yoga, calisthenics, Krav Maga, I don't care what you do, just get active. Get some fresh air and sunlight. Try every day, at least once a day, to just get out there and breathe. Just breathe real air. Get more hours of quality sleep. Go to bed early a couple nights if you have to. It's just important to get your rest. Take a long hiatus from any sort of vice that you have that you know for a fact is not good for your health. I have a whole video about how I took a whole year off of drinking alcohol. If you haven't watched it, please go on ahead and watch it. The link will be in the description. It's a really great video and my most successful video so far. These basics are gonna make you feel so much better physically that it's definitely going to improve your mental health because you are what you eat. Your thought process is going to be a lot more crisp and clean because you're eating more crisp and clean. So a treat now and then is fine, but like, if your diet is mostly consisting of these sugary processed foods and fast food, it's gonna make you feel terrible. Like, it really will. So my advice, alcohol, put it down. Cigarettes, put it down. Sugary junk food, put it down. The vape pen, put it down. You have to return your body to the state of clarity that's not impacted by these stimulants and intoxicants that aren't supposed to be good for your body. Eat a more well-balanced diet. I promise you, you'll feel better. Being a couch potato isn't good for anyone, and I feel like there's something about just sitting around and being lazy that really affects your mind. It just doesn't put you in the right place mentally. I'm not saying you gotta be Mr. or Mrs. Olympia and you know bulging with biceps or nothing like that. I'm just saying you gotta be like healthier. You gotta be more physical. You gotta get into your body more. Like I said earlier, my theory is that you know when you feel depressed, it's like your body 
is telling you something about what's going on internally. When you're in a really hot place, your body starts to sweat and that's your body letting you know that it's hot. When you're in a really cold place, your body starts to shiver because you know that's your body letting you know that it's cold. If you get really dirty going to the beach and you roll around in some sand, you're gonna start to feel really itchy because that's your body letting you know that it's dirty. If you're depressed and you're just feeling really down, I think that's your body's way of letting you know that there's something you're not doing right health-wise. Like, you're not eating the right food, or you're not active enough, or you're not getting the right sleep. It's one of those, or maybe all three. You're allowed to have problems, but I just want you from time to time to think about your situation and someone else's situation in comparison, and just have some gratitude for how good you might have it compared to someone else. Whenever I think about some other people in the world and the conditions that they live in, I immediately become a whole lot more grateful of what I have. Life is full of valleys and peaks, and I think you should have expectations for dips. Nobody is having an amazing time all the time. I don't care what you see on your Instagram feed. I don't care how magical someone else's life looks. Everyone is having a just okay time most of the time. Occasionally, you're going to feel blue. The next time that you do feel blue, I want you to fully embrace that because it's a natural, normal human thing to feel blue. But I don't want you to dwell in it. I want you to immediately after having those thoughts, start thinking about how you can do something else that's gonna make you feel better after you felt blue. Mentally elevate and take yourself to a better place. Journal, go for a walk, listen to a happy song, watch your favorite movie, read a book, exercise, eat a healthy meal, just don't have the pity party. The pity party is not helping you, it's not serving you, it's only making you feel worse and it's gonna keep you feeling worse for longer. Accept that you're having a moment, accept that you're going through some shit right now, and just let it pass. Anyway, long story short, I really just feel like for a lot of people that are in a funk and they're just down right now, you really just need to change your mind, change your perspective, work on your physical health, and work on your mental health. Hopefully this video has helped someone if you're feeling depressed right now, talk to me about it in the comments. I'd like to hear what your story is. For me personally, doing all of these things have really helped me to come out of a bad place. There's nothing worse than being in a funk. And now that I've come out of the funk, I don't ever want to get back in the funk. Unless we're talking about George Clinton, Parliament Funkadelic Funk. That's the kind of funk I'm willing to be a part of. Outside of that, I'm good. As usual, thank you for rocking with me. Uh, I've just reached over 100 subscribers very recently, and I'm so thankful for everyone who's taken the time to subscribe to my channel and who's watching any of these videos. I really, really appreciate it. It means more to me than you could ever actually imagine. Realistically, you could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here with me, and I appreciate that. If you aren't subscribed, please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon so that the Great Spirit algorithm blesses your boy. See you in the next one. Peace.